Uh, today we are talking to Dr. Francis Nangayo. He's a senior manager at the Africa Agriculture Technology Foundation and he is an entomologist. Now an entomologist is a person who understands the science of insects and is going to talk to us about the fall armyworm that is ravaging most of our country. Already 11 counties are down with an invasion of the armyworm. The fall armyworm is uh, an insect pest, a serious one uh, of course and quite invasive in nature that attacks cereal crops such as uh, maize, rice and many other crops like cotton etc uh, causing uh, damage by eating up the leafy parts uh, in the case of maize even the tassels and uh, developing cobs and leaving in its, in its wake uh, serious uh, destruction with the losses of uh, estimated that um, upwards of uh, 60 percent. Uh, there are other categories of armyworm uh, like the African armyworm. The African armyworm has been with us uh, for many years I think since time immemorial. This is also an invasive pest that attacks uh, <coughs> mainly cereal crops and grasses but in a sporadic nature in the sense that uh, one year you could have an invasion of the African armyworm, then it goes away, literally like disappeared for years and then you have another outbreak and so on and so forth. So, uh, given the two, the fall armyworm is a new one having, been, uh, having just been introduced into Africa lately, but the African armyworm is native to Africa. Dr. Nanga, you just told us that we now have a new uh, armyworm in Africa, in Kenya, called the fall armyworm. What would you say, uh, how did it get into Kenya? And uh, given that it's uh, a foreign armyworm to our country, is there a way we can deal with it without necessarily having to use the very expensive pesticides that now farmers are saying they cannot afford? For us entomologists, it's not a totally new thing. We had heard about it. We know about it. We know that it occurs uh, <clears throat> naturally in Western Hemisphere, uh, in areas like uh, the southern states of uh, the United States of America, areas like uh, Mexico, Texas, and uh, countries like Mexico, uh, and countries of South America, and typically Brazil, Paraguay, all the way up to Argentina. So it's been there. And uh, in that part of the world, it's also a serious pest, but not extremely serious in the sense that, uh, of course, having uh, natively occurred there, they have had learned to live with it. They have learned how to control it. Uh, it therefore came into Africa as a total surprise. Uh, the first outbreak of the fall armyworm in Africa was uh, reported in about a year ago in January 2016, and that was in uh, Nigeria and other countries neighboring Nigeria. And uh, within a very short period, uh, the complaints came up from Zambia, Zimbabwe, and even South Africa. And in a matter of months, we started hearing of uh, East Africa, Tanzania, uh, Uganda, now, uh, and now Kenya. Uh, for us entomologists, that is not very surprising because what is known about the fall armyworm is that it's an excellent flyer and it also takes advantage of uh, strong winds. For instance, in, uh, in the US, when it occurs in the southern states like Florida uh, uh, in, in the summer, some entomologists followed it to see how, just how far it can fly by tagging it and then uh, recapturing uh, the insects that had, had been tagged. And uh, believe you me, just within a day and a half, uh, they captured uh, uh, some insects that had been tagged in Florida in the southern parts of uh, Canada, having just flown within 30 hours, 
uh, a distance of about 3,500 uh, kilometers. That is phenomenal. It's like uh, it is also uh, a jet on its own. Insects have evolved mechanisms of uh, dispersal. What the fall armyworm needs to do is uh, to take uh, a flight vertically upwards and the winds called the jet stream, which are, which are blowing to the north, would just then take it, <laughs> take it there. And that is probably what has just happened in Africa because to cover this kind of territory in Nigeria, South Africa, then East Africa, I think it was aided by the winds. Your question was how did it come uh, to Africa? It is unclear exactly uh, how this happened because Africa is geographically quite separated from uh, the other the Americas. Uh, but it is speculated, reasonably speculated, that it could have happened uh, through two ways. One is that, uh, you know, we have globalization, global village, and uh, people move, people trade in commodities. So somebody may have moved commodities, and uh, within those commodities there could have been an egg mass or even young uh, caterpillars of, uh, of, uh, of the amium hidden there, nobody didn't know. And I think when it reached Africa, it must have said, oh my God, I've reached a new territory. <laughs> and uh, the kind of crops that this fall amium is affecting is actually our staple, the maize and the rice. Um, in your opinion, what is going to happen in the food, se food security situation in the country, considering that we now have a problem on our hands? Already, actually, our food security capability had been stretched, considering we are just emerging from a very prolonged drought. Uh, unfortunately, the fall amuam is here, and uh, uh, I think I'll not be exaggerating if I say that our food security uh, capability will be stretched even further. So, uh, the arrival of the fall amuam. Uh, on the continent and in Kenya will just aggravate our food security, food insecurity. And um, I think all measures need to be put in place. I said uh, insecticides may be expensive to begin with, but we have an emergency. And I have already seen uh, in the news uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture talking about um, uh, mobilization campaigns that uh, would be targeted at spraying to mitigate. Uh, but that would be um, managing a crisis. I think beyond that, we need to um, look at uh, more sustainable approaches uh, like uh, biological control, getting the natural enemies that could just naturally suppress this pest, uh, and also uh, uh, combining this with the cultural practices, like I mentioned, of early planting, and uh, also if Kenya will be uh, candid enough and uh, very fair that we have a serious problem, maybe consider adopting um, genetically improved crops like uh, those that are helping uh, deal with this problem in the Americas. But we have an impervious kind of uh, society that doesn't like um, taking on technology, especially when it comes to ge genetic modification. Uh, do you really see a situation where our society will start appreciating that, in fact, science is the way to go? Uh, science has a power to impact society, and I think we must, um, since we have uh, a ministry of science, technology, we have even an organization, uh, Parastotal, called National Council for Science, Technology and Innovation, I think that uh, we, we are all set, we just have to work on it. We have to uh, sensitize our public that uh, some solutions lie in science and technology. Let us pursue them. The fall armyworm is with us, and it's only through science and technology that we'll be able to control this particular pest that is going to ravage our food and impact on our food security. I've been Judith Akolo at the Africa Agriculture uh, Technology Foundation talking to Dr. Francis Nangayo.